We're on the shores of the Jordan River where more than 2,000 years ago, John the Baptist came out of the desert to begin baptizing. Um, John very humbly followed the plan of God. John, John uh, gathered a large following and um, a lot of his people thought he might be the Messiah, but he assured him that he was not. And in fact, later on, after Jesus had been baptized, a lot of John's followers were going to follow Jesus, and some of them got upset and said, they're leaving you and following Jesus. Do something. And John told them, what did he say? He must increase and I must decrease. So John the Baptist was not the plan. He was the helper to bring the plan about. So let's look at the gospel according to St. Luke. So John the Baptist came out from the desert to begin baptizing along the banks of the Jordan River and he preached a message of repentance and baptized for the forgiveness of sins. And he gathered a rather large following and people were beginning to talk among themselves. Could he be the chosen one, the anointed one of Israel? John assured them, I am not he. One is to come after me who is greater than I. I am not fit to untry the straps on his sandals. For while I baptize with water, he will baptize with fire and the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus came to John and asked to be baptized. And John said, no, it is you who should baptize me. But Jesus told John, you must allow it so that all of righteousness must be fulfilled. And so John baptized Jesus and a light shone down from heaven and the Holy Spirit could be seen descending upon Jesus in the form of a dove. And then a voice from the sky could be heard saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In the Eastern tradition, there is not one epiphany, but three. We are familiar with the first epiphany, the coming of the three kings. The third epiphany occurs at the wedding feast at Cana. The baptism of Jesus is the second epiphany. In the second epiphany, John the Baptist helps to reveal Jesus to the crowds along the banks of the Jordan River. Being humble, John knew that he was not worthy to baptize Jesus. An important aspect of humility is obedience. It has often been said that obedience is the highest form of humility. John obediently baptized Jesus, and the glory of God was revealed in this act. In his humility, John knew his role in the plan of salvation. He also knew that his role must move to the background as the ministry of Jesus moved forward. As we grow in faith, each of us must take the same attitude as John. I must decrease, and he must increase. Being submerged under water in baptism represents a type of death. Our old selves must undergo a spiritual death. death. Then we are born again of water and the Spirit. Jesus told Nicodemus, No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Nicodemus questioned Jesus as to how a grown person could be born again. Being born again is now commonly accepted by our Protestant brothers and sisters. I have often been asked, Have you been born again? As if this is a once-in-a-lifetime event. I will tell anyone who asks that I am born again every day. Each day I have to renew my commitment to follow Jesus. Every day I seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Every day I struggle to make morally correct choices even when these fly in the face of what is popular or convenient. When I choose to deny myself of some pleasure or convenience, it is like a little baptism, baptism, a little death, which leads to new life. Author and journalist Michael Brown from Spirit Daily gave a list of ways of dying to self in one of his early books. The original source of this list is not known, 
I will conclude with the shortened version of dying to self. When you are forgotten, neglected, or left out, do not feel hurt by the insult or oversight, but rejoice to be counted worthy to suffer for Christ. When your advice is ignored or your opinion ridiculed, refuse to be angry or defend yourself, but take it all in patient, loving silence. When you are surrounded by waste, folly, and extravagance, lovingly and patiently bear the annoyance or disorder and endure it as Jesus did. Do not be upset or annoyed when your plans are interrupted by the will of God or the needs of your fellow human beings. Never refer to yourself when talking and do not call attention to your own good works. Never seek recognition, but be happy to be unknown. When you see others prosper, be happy for them, even though your own needs are far greater than theirs. Do not feel envy nor question God, but rejoice with them in spirit. How many times have you died lately? Thank you. God bless you.